Cartoon-like video stream? No problem. Using TK Inter in OpenCV. Now let's dive in. Since I know it's gonna take a long time to install everything and it's gonna be complicated, I'm gonna just document with videos everything that I do. I'm gonna start by formatting with the SD card formatter, the SD that I have, because I already tried an image that I had working on the zero. So I'm just gonna first format it. Next, I went to the Raspberry Pi site and I've downloaded this image, the OS 32-bit with the desktop. Next, extract the file out of the zip. It's an IMG, an image file extracted out of the zip file. Using Etcher, flash the image to the SD card. That is done. Take out the SD and push it back in since the etcher is dismounting it. Now we got this folder. Into this folder we're going to add two files. This is the first file we want to add. I've already opened it in Notepad and it looks like this. In here you will need to put the password for your, for your network. This is my network. The next thing we want to do is to add a file I just use a text file and you might need to set up your computer to show you the .txt, the type and we want to remove everything and call it ssh and this will tell the, the Python, uh, sorry, the Raspberry when it starts to start the ssh automatically. Remove the SD from the computer, uh, put it in the Raspberry Pi and switch it on. I've connected to my router and I got a new Raspberry Pi in the system. So now I'm gonna open Putty and connect to the Raspberry. Let's try it out. So I opened Putty and could copied the IP to here and now let's open it up. You will get this alert and all you need to say is yes and I'll bring the window to here. I couldn't drag it before. The user is always spy and the password is Raspberry. And we are logged in. As you can see in this comment, you should change your default password, and you can do this by typing sudo pass wd, press enter, and you will be asked for a new password. The next thing we need to do is to update the system, and you do that by typing sudo apt update. As recommended in Raspberry Pi site, we're going to go with sudo apt full upgrade. Press yes. And now wait for a while. Now let's activate the camera using the Raspi config. Choose the interface options, choose the camera, and choose yes. Now press OK and finish. And we need to restart. We will lose connection. We'll restart the session in a second. An easy way to restart the session is to right click here and do restart session. And we can log in again. And we're in. Since we're using the Raspberry and Distro, we already have Pi Camera. And to check it, we can do the following. And you can see there's no errors. That means it got imported. Now let's install OpenCV. I found this great pip install instruction, and we will follow it. As you can see in this paragraph, this is an unofficial build of the OpenCV packages, and it's not an official release, but it makes installing so much easier and I'll be installing the OpenCV Contribute Python. Scroll down to this section and we'll install all the things that, Pyth that Python on Raspberry needs before we can install the OpenCV. Uh, 
Okay, this is one of the main reasons I decided to make uh, a video, everything that I do while installing. As you can see, running to my first problem, and it's something that I installed two days ago on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm not sure, I'm gonna Google it a little bit and see if I can come up with a conclusion. If I'll find one, I will of course share it here in the video. After a little bit of reading, I found out that installing on a 4 has a bit of a different method. So I found a great guide from the same, actually same site and we're gonna follow this one. So let's do it one step at a time. Now this is the part where the other installation failed and as you can see they're choosing their different libraries here and hopefully this will work. Yes, it seems to be working. As you can see this one was pre-installed. We now install other things that is needed to create a virtual environment. I never worked with virtual environment before, uh, so it's going to be a first for me as well. But let's start by installing the catviv. And I'll just clean the cached file. Now let's make the adjustment so we can use the virtual environments. We'll edit this file and we'll add this to the bottom part of it. Save it. And now let's source it and see if it works well. Okay, seems to be working. Now let's make our virtual environment called CV. Okay, and we got an error. How lovely. What we would do without Google? So a few minutes later, I found this solution. And what I did is I, I uninstalled the virtual environment and wrapper and then installed a specific version. And on top of it, I made this change to the bottom of the bash file, um, it's basically adding these two lines. And now it works great, and I will demonstrate to you. So now, when we try and do this, it actually works. Since I do plan to use a camera, let's install this as well. Now, when that's done, we have to take a choice of we're going to take the easy route or the long route. Today, I'm definitely taking the easy route, which is in doing a pip install of the OpenCV, not downloading it all and compiling it on my computer. So I'm going to be brave today. Basically, they're saying to install a specific version, and I did run into this issue when I was trying to install that on the zero, and I ended up installing 4.1.1. But today I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to take this, this and remove the version part and let it install the latest version and hopefully it will be fine. We'll see.
All right, we get success. Now let's test it out. Since we are already in the environment, what we need to do is to run Python. Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. Run Python. You can see I'm running 3.73. And now let's try and import CV2. And we got an issue. So being brave didn't work all that well for me. So what I did is, is uninstall it and install it with this specific version here. And it did work. And as you can see, I did uh, I went into Python again and I put CV2 and it's okay. There's no errors. Now we got a little bit more installation to do. We first have this tutorials that talks about using TK Inter and CV. And from this, we're going to take two important installation, which is this one, which I've already done, and Pillow. I'm going to put everything that I'm saying in the description as well. Now, next thing that I want to do was to display a video feed. And again, from the same site, which is an amazing, I'm going to put all the links as well. We'll have to install the IMU tools, which is a bit of a wrapper around the OpenCV, makes life a little bit easier. And now when I got all of this done, I followed this instruction. I made a little bit of changes because I didn't want to have a clear feed. I want to have a sketch like, and I'm going to show you in a second. Um, so let's see if it's actually working. It's two files part. I'm going to explain to you a little bit later. I just want to make sure that everything is working. I call my runner file test.py. It actually starts the stream in the background and runs the actual application. And this is how you run it. It's warming up the camera and it's going to give me an error. And the reason is that I'm using it headless. It, it doesn't have any display, so it cannot work. So now we'll have to wait until the evening when my kid doesn't watch the TV because it's the only place I can have an HDMI and we'll check it out. I'm not sure how to make a video of it. I'm going to look at the internet before I go there. And uh, hopefully I'll have a video a little bit later. As you can see, it worked just well. Now let's go into the code and see how it works, how we tap into the stream and what we do to the images. Let's first talk about the file that runs the show, test.py. It does two important things. One, it sets a video stream using the I am utils video stream object and then launches the application passing that stream as an object. I made one change this file from the original tutorial and this to add a resolution of 640 by 480 since the default is a half of that and it got very very pixelated. The photoboot app.py file contains the logic of the process. I made two changes in the init section which is to add binding for keyboard strikes and adding self.effect to index the wanted effect. Pressing any key will change the effect index. In the video loop, we read from the stream and according to the effect index, we apply the needed image manipulation. Then we resize the image and turn it into the frame image in the TK inter. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this but we'll definitely start by adding some more cool effects. If you have any suggestion or code to share, I'll be more than happy to hear from you. And if you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment. See you next time.